Hey guys, how's it going? Today I have the Alienware M15 R2 in front of me and I'm going to give you my thoughts about this laptop. So a few months ago I did a video on the Alienware M15 R1 which was originally released in 2018 and then a year later Dell came out with a new revision uh, of the M15 uh, when the only real changes are the exterior so the design language changed and that came out last year 2019. And uh, you might be wondering why I got the R2 since I already got the R1 and in that video I said that the R1 was a better value because the R2 costs $300 more and the specs are pretty much the exact same. There's no real differences besides the exterior while well, the internal components are basically the same. Uh, and that still remains true and I still believe that so you might be wondering why I have the R2 now. Well, uh, a few weeks ago me and my friend got a couple good discounts. We got a few coupons for the Dell outlet store because you know Dell offers sales and discounts on their inventory a lot. And I was looking at the refurbished laptops and uh, the M15 R2 actually came up on there a few times. Uh, the R1 is also there at an even better discount. But I got the R2 uh, including the coupon uh, for about $1,300 which I think is the exact same price I actually paid for the R1, right? So in the R1 video, I mentioned how I paid $1,300 on eBay, and I thought that was a pretty good deal for the specs. Well, I just got the exact same specs, but with an R2 now. <laughs> so I figured, well, might as well upgrade because I do like this design better, actually. And uh, I did mention that in my video as well. I do like this design language better. Um, by the way, if you do want an R1 still, I still think that's a better value because you can find that on the Dell outlet store and with coupons you can probably get it for about 1100 which is still a few hundred dollars cheaper than the R2. So make no mistake the original M15 R1 with the exact same specs is still a better value. But here we have the R2 with a new design language which I actually like a lot too. So this is the legend design language that Alienware originally came out with on their Area 51M. That was the laptop they came out in uh, 2018 with user upgradable components, uh, including the CPU. And uh, that was a really, really powerful and expensive laptop, right? Um, and then a year later, Alienware or Dell, they upgraded their Alienware M15 with exact same design language, uh, which is pretty cool. They, up they upgraded their desktops too and their, their laptops, which includes the M15. And uh, I believe the M17 also got upgraded as well. But uh, yeah, I do like this new design language, um, especially in the white color. So this is the lunar, the lunar white color that I got. There's also a like dark side black, I think. Um, so basically, they're just fancy names for white and black. But I found that really cool that Alienware released white and black laptops because usually they release silver, right? Uh, and I believe this is the first time that we've seen Alienware really experiment a lot with these different colors that we didn't really get on um, the previous Alienware 15 models. So uh, you can see this, this actually says 15 here, which is um, right on the lid, and then you have the standard Alienware uh, Alien head logo right here, which is actually made up of a different material now than before. It was previously like a silver metallic finish, but now it's uh, kind of a see-through opaque um, kind of material here. So yeah, it's pretty cool. and. Um, so there is pretty big design differences. So now if we open up the laptop, you can see that the design changed quite a bit from the R1. So first of all, you can see that the grill here that was previously on the R1 is made more prominent on the R2. The Alienware power button has uh, shifted to the side here instead of the middle. This keyboard is actually the travel. I feel like the feedback, the typing experience is better than the R1. Um, but the R1 has a good keyboard as well. But this one, the buttons, um, I mean, the, the keys are slightly larger. And I feel like the travel is pretty good as well. So this is a pretty nice keyboard, I feel. This is probably one of the best um, keyboards on the gaming laptop that I've felt so far. Uh, however, they lost the numpad. So that was one of the things I liked about the R1, about the M15 R1, is that they had a numpad here which you know is really good if you're uh, doing a lot of uh, accounting or doing calculator stuff and I often do use the calculator on my computer so I feel like um, I do use the numpad so it's unfortunate that that's gone uh, but they 
did make the main keyboard a better typing experience, I feel. And also they added um, per key lighting instead of the zone lighting, which Alienware's all had before. And Alienware finally got it, you know, catching up to their competitors now, uh, finally got the per key lighting, which you can control with the Alienware command center. Uh, I feel like there was a missed opportunity here with the speakers. They could have put the speakers here, just like on the MacBook Pro, and have them up firing, which would mean, you know, better volume uh, and it's facing towards you, but they have it down firing instead, which is a disappointment. Um, and yeah, this is a specs on this computer is a Core i7 9th Gen 9750H. Again, probably not too different from the 8750H that I had on my R1. But it's a slight upgrade, I guess, 8th gen to 9th gen. And then 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, I got 256 gig SSD because I'm going to install another SSD in the remaining slot. And it has an RTX 2060 in it. So otherwise, the specs are pretty similar to what I got on the R1. And again, the same price as what I paid for the R1, which is $1,300 US. And um, yeah, trackpad is okay. It's nothing special to talk about. You're going to use a mouse with this anyways because it's a gaming laptop. Uh, they added this webcam down here. It's not really a the webcam. It's the uh, Toby eye tracking, which I don't really use. I'm not sure how useful it is, but they have um, the Toby eye tracking down here. Um, then this screen, I got the 144 hertz refresh. Uh, this is actually an upgrade over the R1 I had because the R1 that I got on eBay only gave me a 60 hertz screen. So actually, I got this 144 hertz screen for the same price. Um, in addition to the upgrade to the new design, of course. And then you have the standard webcam up there. And um, otherwise, the I would say the weight and the dimensions of this laptop and the ports are pretty much the same as the M15 R1. Um, not too much difference there. If you're looking for a light, thin gaming laptop, either the R1 or the R2 would both be pretty good. I wouldn't say that one's much lighter or much thinner than the other. They're both pretty light and thin. Um, I know Dell probably advertises the R2 as being thinner than the R1, but it's it's not that noticeable. It's definitely not as noticeable as going from the old Alienware 15 R3 over to the M15, right? That was a huge upgrade um, in terms of the thin and lightness. Um, the M15 really, you know, shaved off a lot of that bulk. But going from the M15 R1 to the M15 R2, don't think there's too much of a difference. It's maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 pounds-ish. And uh, I don't think it's noticeably thinner than the R1. Um, going over the ports here, it's pretty much the exact same as the R1. You got two USB-A here. And then the back here, actually, you notice something different is that the back actually lights up with this ring here. So one of the things about the R1 is that it was very understated. It's probably uh, Alienware's most understated gaming laptop. It didn't really have many lights or LEDs around it. And this one came back with the LEDs basically, but on the back only. Um, I still like the Alienware 15 R3 with the, the side LEDs right on the lid and, and the chassis, but that's not gonna come back because you need a really thick laptop for that. Um, but I do like they put the LEDs back on, on the back here, which is the legend design, right? So this is definitely more of a looker than the R1 for sure, um, as well as these you know honeycomb grill vents. Uh, you have uh, full-size HDMI, mini display port, uh, Thunderbolt 3, and then you have the Alienware graphics amplifier, which has always been a feature of Alienware laptops, uh, the AC adapter right here. And then on this side, you have a full-size Ethernet port, which is killer Ethernet, by the way, um, another USB 3 and a headphone jack. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the same ports. Like I said, the major difference between the R1 is the design language, which I think looks a lot better on the R2. And uh, I would say the only problem I would have uh, with the design of the R2 is the fact that I think I really wish they kept the numpad here from the R1. I really miss the, the numpad. But uh, other than that, I like it better. I mean, it's, it's a white Alienware gaming laptop. I think this is the first time they've done that, right? Like how many white gaming laptops are there? I think I only know the Razer Blade and um, maybe that's it. <laughs> Uh, just there's just not a lot of white, you know, gaming laptops out there. It's usually like black and red. Uh, yeah, but this is this is cool that Alienware did this. They usually have silver, right? The first time they've done this pure white thing. Uh, so it's it's cool. I really like the design language. Um, so yeah, we're gonna actually. This is the back or the bottom. 
uh, just this honeycomb grill. But we're going to take it open because I'm going to install an SSD in here, of course. One of the common ways I do things is I buy gaming laptops with a small storage to save cost from the OEM, but then I upgrade it uh, myself, which is usually cheaper and more cost effective. All right, so I just removed the screws. There's eight screws, so it's not too difficult to remove. And then here's the internals. Uh, as you may have seen in other reviews online, uh, one problem with the R2 is it's actually not as upgradable as the R1. Um, there's actually only one thing you can do here, which is upgrade M2 slot. That's the only thing you can really upgrade here, uh, which is a disappointment because the R1 has an additional, well, if you get the, the lower wattage battery, um, I think there's a 60 watt hour battery. If you get that version, you get another 2.5 inch slot and you can upgrade that with an additional hard drive in addition to another M2 slot. So yeah, that's one of the things I noted in my other video, my R1 video is that if you really want more storage, the R1 is actually a better cho choice because it has an additional 2.5 inch slot. Whereas the R2 only has this, this one and in, in addition to the operating system drive, of course. So in total two. M2 slots, whereas the R1 has two M2 plus an additional 2.5. Um, yeah, uh, battery actually don't think it's all too different, and the cooling don't think it's all too different from the R1. I think it's it's roughly about the same. The thermals and the uh, battery life is roughly about the same as the R1. So again, not too much different there. So we're actually going to install this one terabyte SSD. This crucial, uh, which I think is a good deal on Amazon. You know, it's about like 70 bucks. For 70 bucks, you get a one tera M2 SSD, probably the best value you can get on Amazon. So I just got this one. All right. Um, so yeah, this is the one I got. Uh, of course, there's gonna be more performant SSD drives. Yeah, so there's like a bunch of expensive, you know, SSD brands, like there's Samsung, Intel, uh, Kingston, Corsair, uh, I think Mushkin and uh, Patriot, you know, a bunch of hard drive makers, but they're usually more expensive and Crucial is a pretty good value. I think SanDisk is, an, is another one I use a lot, but they usually are good value for the 2.5 inch uh, SATA SSD versions. <laughs> this uh, Crucial I use for the M2 NVMe. Um, so yeah, here it is. There's my NVMe M2 and uh, so I didn't buy this with a lot of storage space on the main one. So that's only 256 gigs. So that's because I want to pop this one in. All right. So uh, I think there's actually a problem with this particular screw in here. Uh, it looks like for some reason uh, my screwdriver head uh, kind of busted it. So I cannot really actually remove it. So. Unfortunately, this is what happens when you're not careful sometimes. I'm going to have to hack this in, which means we'll plug the M2 in as usual. Right. Okay. okay, I'm going to plug this in. Usually the screwdriver would actually hold this down. But I think the space actually might be tight enough for me just to tape it over and it would be okay. So we're gonna, just going to hack it a little bit. And this will be okay because I think this chassis is actually thin enough where it will actually keep this down, I think. That might be okay. So, yeah, there's not much space here, so I think it might be okay if I don't screw it in. Just have this. Yeah. All right. So it's a hacky way of doing it, but the screw kind of got destroyed. <laughs> accidentally 
and I can't take it out anymore. So yeah, but I think this should work. All right, so I just put the back cover back on and screwed it back in. Now let's reboot the computer to see if it detects the hard drive that I just taped in. <laughs> By the way, guys, this hinge mechanism is also slightly different from the M15. So the M15 had the entire hinge uh, mechanism latched exactly from the back and uh, the whole thing kind of just flips over whereas this one it's like this is the most that it will tilt back and it's taking just like a slice or a portion of the chassis and and uh, moving back like that it doesn't take the entire back of the chassis all right so we get the per key backlighting going on here i'm gonna hit the bios uh, we're just gonna check to see if this hard drive is detected by the BIOS. Um, so it is, as you can see here, this is the PCI SSD2, uh, detects our crucial, or my crucial hard drive that I just put in. Uh, the first one is actually an SK Hynix, and that's fine, because SK Hynix actually makes the uh, OEM hard drives for a lot of the computers. So okay, it actually detects the crucial, which is great. Then we're gonna see, um, probably have to change some settings to make it uh, become detected in Windows. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this perky backlighting is something that Alienware should have done a long time ago, but better late than never, I suppose. All right, so before it can be detected in Windows, we actually have to initialize it from disk management. So this is uh, what I get when I hit up disk management. It says you must initialize the disk. So we're just gonna initialize the disk that I just added so it says, you know, this almost one terabyte, this is one terabyte after formatting. So 930 gigs unallocated, right? So we actually have to put a simple volume on here. And we're going to add it to, yeah, we're going to make it D for data, of course, you know, for games. <laughs> you can put this game, because this is my gaming computer. Um, and yeah, we're just going to format this. All right. So uh, after that, uh, if you go to Windows Explorer, we can see that D is there. So yeah, yay. The taped hard drive hack worked, I suppose. For now, we'll see how long that tape holds up. Um, but yeah, we're going to test out some games on here. And... Uh, see what happens um yeah you know, i'll show you the fps as well so yeah the specs on this display it's a 144 hertz ips panel full hd and there's also an oled 4k panel also available but of course there's an upcharge and it's not uh the high the refresh rate is not there so it's a 60 hertz standard refresh rate panel it's not a high 144 hertz refresh rate which is probably going to be more relevant for gamers yeah, so if you're watching movies on this thing, yeah, get the OLED panel, but if you're using this for gaming, which is what most people use Alienware for, then I think it's better to get the 144 hertz uh, full HD panel. It's not even like the RTX can even push a 4K on an OLED panel anyways, right? So yeah, anyways, we're gonna test this out with some games. All right, this is Far Cry New Dawn. Everything is set to high settings, but not ultra settings. So this is just on high, and uh, this is 1080p, of course, Full HD, and I'm getting about 80 FPS, I would say, 70, 80, yeah, around 70 to 80 FPS. So again, everything's set to high settings, 1080p, um, and I'm getting about 70 to 80, so it's... Still pretty smooth, and on the RTX 2060. So that's Far Cry New Dawn. Let's give you my frame rates on that. All right, now this is the Outer Worlds. I'm playing on full HD. Everything's set to very high. I'm getting around, I would say, 60 to 70 FPS. Yeah about 60 to 70 FPS. Sometimes it dips into the 50s, but um, usually around, I would say, 60 FPS on average. So everything's set to very high, full HD. This is uh, 
Outer Worlds. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you get 60, it's pretty fluid. Would have liked to see higher, but it is uh, not bad. Okay, on the Alienware M15R2. All right, this is Jedi Fallen Order, which is uh, Star Wars. Um, and I am set everything to high, but not, not uh, epic. And of course, full HD, everything. Uh, getting around, again, 60, 70 FPS. Let's go into some combat areas. Yep, so um, combat doesn't really slow it down that much. Yeah, so I would say around 60, 70 FPS in Jedi Fallen Order. Everything's set to high and uh, full HD. So, pretty smooth. Alright guys, and that's the Alienware M15 R2. Just showed you some gameplay uh, of the games running on this machine. Uh, three recent games that I think are pretty graphically demanding. Um, seems to run them fine, but if you set it to epic settings, I think you might dip below like 50-40 FPS. But as long as you keep it in probably like high settings, I think you should go over 60. Uh, so yeah. It's a pretty good computer. Um, again, if you're looking for the best value Alienware, uh, the R1 is still really good. The M15 R1, you can have the R1 for the same specs as the R2 for about $300, $200, $300 less. I think you can get it for about $1,100 with the same specs as this one. Uh, RTX 2060, 512 gigabyte SSD, uh, the Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, so you can definitely pick that one up for cheaper. Uh, however, if you like this new design, which I do, then uh, the R2, you can decide whether that's paying, that if that's worth paying an extra $200, $300 extra for. So, so you can see that the back here design is a little bit different. All right, so Alienware changed up their lighting design a little bit as well. So on the back, you have the entire alien head lighting up. Before, it used to be just the outline and the eyes. Now it's the entire head. You may like that better or not. I think it's pretty cool. And then you have the circular ufo kind of sh ring right here which is lighting up which is i think definitely cooler than the m15 r1 because that one didn't have really anything at the back besides the uh, the head lighting up right uh, now you have this cool ufo ring which is the design taken from the area 51m uh, i think still it's not as uh flashy as the original alienware 15 r3 which i had uh four years ago that one had, you know, LED strips on the side of the lids as well as on the chassis. But that was also much heavier and bulkier, which is why they were able to do that. This one, I feel, is a really good compromise between um, having a really cool looking design that, you know, screams Alienware. And is also thin and light and uh, I think very modern looking. So it's not, I mean, obviously it's a gamery looking laptop, but it's not like too in your face about it and I think it's very elegant I mean you can I think you could bring this to your office and it'll be fine right I can't say that about every gaming laptop but uh, I think you can even bring this to your office and it won't be too like yeah won't be too distracting so yeah guys that's the Alienware M15 R2 uh, I think if you buy it brand new it's still quite expensive but you can pick it up on the Dell outlet store which I think has a lot of good refurbished deals uh, for a discount and I picked it up for about 1300 US which I think is a pretty good deal for this of course if you want an even better value you can pick up the M15 R1 for even cheaper it's really up to you if you like this newer design or not if you think it's worth the extra 200 300 bucks but uh, I like it I think Alienware has definitely upped their game uh, in comparison to Razer and um, I and Asus as well right I was looking at the Asus Zephyrus G14 which I like the cool little lights, the dot matrix um, LED lights on the lid. But, you know, when that comes out, it's going to be way more expensive than this. 
so I figured, okay, might as well pick up the Alienware. And again, um, I think this this is a perfect balance between having a laptop that's really unique, have a unique styling, and it doesn't look too gamery. It, like it doesn't, it's not offensive to a non-gamer or anything like that. It's got, it's not gonna like, you know, it's not like the old like MSI is still doing this right. MSI Gigabyte's got a lot better. But like HP Omen, MSI, they still have that black and red look, which I don't really like that much. I think it's it's just way too gamery. That's used to be that all gaming laptops had that red and black gamery look, right? But thankfully now it's changing, right? Razer, um, Gigabyte, Arrow, I think I really like that one. The Asus Zephyrus and now Alienware even. The original boutique uh, gaming brand has now changed into a more modern, elegant, sleeker look, which I like better. So that's it guys, Alienware M15 R2, pick it up. Thanks for watching.